EOTM Radio. Entrepreneurs on the moon. We shape the life for a better tomorrow. What's going on? My name is Stephen Knight, and you're listening to the Stephen Knight Show. You know we broke your heart, dude. Rolling down your face. You know I'm coming over to make sure you're okay. You don't have to wait. I'm a crazy baby. Call me Superman. You know I'm crazy. Good evening and welcome to the Stephen Knight Show here on EOTM Radio. As always, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. We'll be discussing the latest in entertainment news, sports, fashion, and movie reviews. Now, tonight we welcome talented MC B. Taylor. And then later we chat with lifestyle coach himself, Robert Booker. Plus, contemporary R&B and electronic, electric pop group, make sure I get the name right, Electro Melodica will join us later on the show. As always, I want you to call in with your questions and comments. The number is 718-664-6543. Again, that's 718-664-6543. You can also join us in chat. There's a link on our Facebook page. Also, I remind you to connect with us on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, Google+, Plus, and, of course, our, our official website, the stevenisshow.webs.com. Uh, finally, we are nominated for ATL's Hottest Entertainment Award that take place here in Atlanta uh, next month, so definitely uh, go vote for us. We're nominated for – the Stephen I Show is nominated for the Hottest Online Radio Show, which we won back in 2012, and then I'm nominated for Hottest Male Vocalist and Hottest Rising Superstar. So definitely go to atltitus.com and cash your vote. We definitely appreciate you. Now, uh, Chike's out tonight. Hey, Ron, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Stephen. I know you're on location. You're, uh, you're you're playing basketball. Yeah, I actually just stepped out out the gym, so I'm actually outside, literally outside, outside. So. Okay. I do remember one time I came up there, me and you had a little tournament. Right, did you get any better since then? <laughs> um, people, don't let Stephen um, pull y'all's uh, finger. Uh, he <laughs> or uh, pull your leg or or pull your chain, whatever. Um, Stephen, I'll beat you, brother. What? I beat you two games. You beat me once. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's been a minute. But yeah. Been a, uh, yeah. Okay. If you say so, hey, you, you're the boss. <laughs> You are well, yeah, involved, we, so. we we can do a rematch later on and see. Absolutely. We'll oh, bring we do that? Yes, sir. Yeah, All right. absolutely. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Ms. Parker, how are you doing? All I know is you tried it. You tried well, it at night with us. Uh, <laughs> 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 I was going to stay there. I'm tired, but I'm good. I'm doing good. It's Monday. Do you want to hear about my Monday? All right, I got up this morning late, which is not a big problem. Because I went too late, but I, I got up late. Then I get dressed and everything, and I get in my car, and I can't find my wallet. And I'm like, oh, no. I always keep my wallet in the same place. So I was looking around the house. I called the gym to see if I left it there. They said my, my wallet was there. So I drive to the gym. It's not my wallet. It's someone else's. And I come back home, go around the house again, and then finally I remember that I rode with a friend yesterday to the store, and it fell out my pocket. It was in there. So, okay, that's that. Get to work, have a pretty good day. I had a headache all day, but I had a pretty good day. Um, got some good news about, a, you know, something I'm working on at work. And then my boss tells me, you know what, everyone's going to be out the office the rest of the day. You go ahead and go home and work the rest of the day from home. It's about 3.30. I say, great. Pack my stuff up, go to my car, flat tire. <laughs> flat tire. So, uh, um, some take days care of that. Some <laughs> I, I mean, but I had a positive, you know, me and you, we were working on this positivity and everything. I had a positive. Uh-huh. I, saw that, I saw that flat tire. I said, but, but it all worked out, you know. I, I still got to come home and get a nap in and everything. But, yeah, that was my Monday. It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> I'm glad it all worked out. Yeah, yeah. What, how was your weekend? It was good. I had some, some car issues, but, um, you know, it all worked out. I saw that, yeah. Mm. And um, had a couple of dinners, um, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. It's just like, you know, it's the time of year where it's always something going on. I just feel tired. My training yeah. tonight was late. 
So I was telling him, I'm like, seems like I'm gaining weight instead of losing weight. He said, yeah, it seems like you're going out every night, too. <laughs> like, All right. Oops. It's the season, right? In the tour right. season, because right. it's like so, so much going on. Yeah. I'm lucky I'm not in an office with all the holiday food, but then I got to watch, right. you know, where going out, I am eating out more. So that, that does normally makes a difference. So. Yeah, yeah. I had a conversation with a friend today. We were talking about how this time of year, you know, you're not as motivated. You know, even though you, like, I know I work out, you know, you're still working out and everything. But it's like that cold weather and that all the good food, it's like, it's a trap. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. All right, well, Adam, uh, what's going on with you? Hey, nothing much. Uh, just enjoyed the good weekend and tried to survive another Monday. Yeah. How, did you uh, – you went on a trip – was it last weekend? Uh, I was in Nashville a couple weekends ago, yeah, actually okay. for Halloween. Okay. How was that? Uh, that was actually fun. Uh, Nashville – it's probably my first time really going to Nashville, and – uh it's actually a really cool city, you know. I don't know too much about it besides it's a big, uh, of course, music city, so big country mm-hmm. music presence and everything like that. But the downtown's really cool. Um, it's yeah, it's a it's a fun town. I can see why people live there. Um, so yeah, I would recommend okay. visiting it. All right. Well, what would you get to see for movies? So this weekend I went to see uh, the movie that's actually number one at the box o- box office this past weekend, Big Hero Six. So. That was kind of a little bit of a surprise since Christopher Nolan's Interstellar came out this weekend, which is the big uh, space drama. Mm-hmm. And um, Big Hero 6 is the Disney movie where you have a kind of a futuristic world, a little bit of a futuristic world in San Francisco. So it's like a mix of San Francisco and Tokyo. And this kid, he creates kind of a superhero team um, to battle this villain. And I can't go into too many details because it kind of reveals a lot of the plot. But his primary friend is this inflatable robot that kind of goes along on the adventures with him. Um, it's a Disney movie, um, and it was great. I mean, you know, for a Disney movie, they did a really good job of kind of giving you the characters, of giving you the rundown, not going too deep into the complicated storyline. You know, the characters are enjoyable, they're lovable, and there's a good... A lot of good comedy moments in it. So uh, if you're looking for a movie to take the kids to see or if you're looking for something that's lighthearted, uh, definitely check it out. All right, all right. And what's coming down the pipeline? So the big one is, of course, uh, the next Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part Mm -hmm. 1, which is continuing the trend of splitting up the last movie in a series so they can make more money off of it. And that will come out in a couple weeks. Besides that, we have Hobbit next month, and um, those are the big ones on my radar right now. All right. Are you working on anything? You know, everyone does listen to Adam Axe is what is a very good actor, so are you working on any projects right now? <laughs> well, I just did a little industrial a couple weeks ago. I don't know if I mentioned that for a, an online kind of uh, mobile app, an industrial okay. kind of like a, a – um, it's kind of like a video for – clients. So, for example, if you're a customer, you're probably never going to see this video, but if you were interested in this app, if you wanted to be one of their kind of customers to work with their business, this is a video you would watch to see what, how this can bring you more customers and things like that. So, um, I'll let you guys know when that comes out, but that was kind of a cool little uh, quick project that we shot downtown, and that's the main thing that I've been doing lately. All right. Well, Adam, as always, we appreciate you. Definitely have a great week, okay? All right, thanks, you too. All right. Hey, Ron, what's going on? We just talked to you. You're on the courts. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm take I'm taking a break to um to just talk to everybody. Um, sports, man. It's, it's it's not a lot going on in sports. Well, first of all, Falcons, congratulations. Yeah. Y'all won. Big ups. Mm-hmm. Finally, you know. So <laughs> happy times and um. Atlanta, uh, see, oh, yo, this is what I want to talk about. Did y'all see um, Thursday night football? It was the um, the the Cincinnati Bengals versus the um, Cle- Cleveland Browns. No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Okay, well, um, Devin Devin Stills, he's the football player whose whose daughter's fighting. For, 
fighting cancer. Mm-hmm. She's a little girl. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. she made her national debut. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And she is just adorable. She is just a just a sweetheart. Just a she's so. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, it it and, just, and she, it and just she, to me. She's battling wow. cancer. Is that correct? Stage four. Yes. Stage, Stage four cancer. And so yes. this was the first game she was able able to come see her father exactly. play. Exactly. See her daddy play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, it was powerful. It was so mm-hmm. pow- powerful to um, see that. So, too bad that her um, dad's team lost, but oh, wow. but her dad but her dad won. I mean, he definitely won in the long run. Yeah, just absolutely. being able to to see his his um, daughter there. But yeah, she's just adorable, and she's so strong for such a little girl going through what she's mm-hmm. going through. She just yeah. seems so happy and smiling and just mature and mm, it's powerful. I mean, she yeah, can yeah. teach grown-ups. She story. can teach yeah. adults. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I just wanted wanted to to mention that LeBron James and, and, and the Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Browns, damn, I'm sorry, y'all. The <laughs> Cleveland Cavaliers, oh my gosh, Cleveland Cavaliers are struggling right now. It's not, it's early in the season, but they're, right. they're, they're you know, it's it's a rough start. It's a rough start. Did you expect so, them? Did you expect that they wouldn't struggle though? I, I expected them oh, to yeah. struggle initially. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Because I I actually mentioned a couple of weeks ago that there that there was a player or two that's currently with Cleveland who last year it was their team. It was his. It was this person's mm-hmm. team right, named yeah. Kyrie Irving. Last year it was his team. He was the star. Now, in essence, he has to take us. You know, he has to take a take a backseat role to LeBron and his mm-hmm. LeBron's team. And some players, they're not they're not cool with that. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an ego thing. Yeah. It's 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 an ego. It's mm-hmm. it's an ego. And so there's been issues with Mr. Irving not wanting to pass the ball much. And wow. it's been addressed. It's been out there in the media, and hopefully he'll um, pass the ball more. Because if he doesn't, LeBron, you know, he'll 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 make it happen. Either he'll yeah. pass the ball, or he'll sit, you know, or he'll be traded, whatever. But um, yeah, it's LeBron's team. Kyrie Ky- mm-hmm. newsflash, brother. It's not your but, team anymore. anymore. You you, you yeah. are not the number one dude no more. It's um, Bronze team, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, what else is going on? Oh. Uh, Dallas Cowboys. They won. Yay for the for the um, Cowboy fans out there. I'm mm-hmm. not one of them, but I just would mention <laughs> that the Cowboys won, and Dallas is playing really good this season. I yeah. I can't talk bad about them. They're playing really good. So yeah. Uh, moving on. That's it, man. I mean, sports is kind of it's kind of. Mm, right now, there's nothing really popping off too much. Right now. Oh, out. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, no, no. One more thing. Michael Vick. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Michael Vick played good yesterday. He played really, mm. really good, yes. Miss Parker, I don't know if if you saw the um, the um, Jets game yesterday or Stephen, but Michael Vick played really good. Like, he looked like the Vick of old with the Falcons like 10 years ago. Like he, yeah. That's what we like to say. Yeah, we like to say that. Yeah, yeah. 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 so – Big ups to Michael Vick. Um, that's pretty much it, man. Sports. That's nothing else really going on right now. Everything's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of chill right, right now. You know the um, NFL season's in. It's at the halfway point, so mm-hmm. uh, like a lot of really going on. And and then with the um, NBA, it's just started. So it's, it's right. Yeah. It's in its second. Second weekend, so people are just trying to fail themselves, and I'm sure I'll have more that I'll talk about yeah, as 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 the season goes on. So, but yo, you can follow me on Facebook and in Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Y'all should know by now, but I'll say it again: A Ron Cosby. That's A R O N Cosby, like Bill. And I'll talk to y'all next week. Actually, you're staying on for hot topics, but uh, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. But I just need sports. Sports-wise, sports. I'll talk to y'all next yeah. week on sports. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And Ms. Ferguson's there today. How you doing, Ms. Ferguson? 
Hey, Janera. Hey, how are you? Hey, Aaron. Hey. Oh, wow. Well. I know you've been busy. <laughs> you've been busy lately. I have been, yes. I'm so sorry. Well, good to have, have you back. <laughs> it's good to good be back. back. Okay. I miss you guys. I, I know you have some wonderful things for us. I do, I do. Um, I have a couple of things, and hopefully I'll be redeeming myself for being gone for so long. I hope um, so. That's my hope, my wish, and my dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll take it away. Okay. Um, well, you know that tomorrow's Veterans Day, so, um, you know, we're proud of all you vets out there. Um, and obviously so are the stores because they're they're having like mega sales. Um and also it's good it's a good thing because this is just in time for the holidays. Um and they discounted a lot of stuff, like deeply discounted. Um, like Piperline dot com, they're having a veteran day sale. And I know I talk about Piperline dot com a lot. Um that's um an affiliate of Gap and Banana Republic and Old Navy. Um, they're having a sale that ends tomorrow. And if you shop now, you can get an extra 30% off of your purchase. Um, and you can also get an extra 40% off of final sale items. Um, and this is this is something, uh, this is a place where guys and girls can shop. So this includes everyone. Um, Nordstrom Rack is having a sale, and, of course, that's Nordstrom's um, outlet. They're having a sale, um, and if you shop there now through tomorrow, you can get an extra 25% off of clearance items. I actually just bought my, of course I bought something, but I just bought my aunt um, a Kohan purse for like 70 bucks, and it was normally $400. So, and it was, of course, on clearance. So, I mean, you know, like they have really, really good deals um, there. So I I would just, I would suggest like going online because, of course, Nordstrom Rack has an online store. Um, Today only and online only, the limited is having a sale. And you can, if you shop there now, you can get, 40% 40% off of full price items, plus you can get an extra 25% when you spend over $100. And because this is an online-only sale, you can also get free shipping on your purchase. So um, you need to use code NIGHT at checkout, N-I-G-H-T. Bloomingdale's is having another friends and family sale. Um, they have these like once a month. They're no longer exclusive, so I don't even feel special when I shop them anymore. But I uh, <laughs> like they're having them every month now. I guess it's just a gimmick to get people to shop there because, you know, Bloomingdale's is kind of pricey sometimes. Um, yeah. But if you shop there now, you can get um, 20% off of your purchase. Um, and if you're shopping online, you need to use code HOLIDAY. Um, today is the last day to shop Gap and get 40% off of your purchase. Um, if you're shopping online, use code SFBEST. Um, and this also includes um, the Gap factory stores. So that's, of course, the Gap outlet. So um, they have some really good sales at the Gap factory stores. Saks Fifth, well, Saks Fifth Avenue office, they're having a sale as well. Um, if you shop there now, you can get an extra 40% off of shoes. Plus, you can get an extra 50, you can get 50% off of gifts and accessories. Um, Express is having a sale, and of course, everybody loves Express especially since they added their men's line a couple of years back. Um, they're having a sale and you can get up to you can get up to fifty percent off of everything in the store. Of course this this excludes gift cards and watches, but everything else you can get up to fifty percent off off. Um Old Navy is having a sale and I want everybody to get ready for this because there's a lot of stuff going on at Old Navy right now. Um they have teas for the family starting at just four dollars. Um, you can get up to fifty percent off of fifty uh, percent off of everything in the store, and you can get an extra twenty five percent off if uh, off uh, if you shop online. So wow, yeah, they have a lot of stuff going on, and I and I think it's it's you know specifically for um, Veterans Day. Uh, Banana Republic is having a sale now through tomorrow, so this is their Veterans Day Veterans Day sale. Um, if you shop there, you can get forty percent off of your purchase. Um, and if you're on, if you're shopping online, you need to use code BR Good. And last but not least, uh, J Crew is having a sale now through tomorrow um, for Veterans Day. Veterans Day, and you can get 25% off of fall items. Um, and if you're shopping online, you need to use code Get Warm. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for you guys this evening. And they can find all that at BudgetShopAholic.com, correct? They surely can. 
Okay, great. And you can go on our Facebook uh, page for a link as well. Ms. Ferguson, as always, thank you for keeping us looking good at a good price. <laughs> sure thing. All right, have a good Talk one. See you guys later. Okay, good night. All right, good night. Hey, Ron, Ms. Parker, you ready to tackle these hot topics? Let's do it. I'm ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first one is I know that uh, yeah, you you like uh, Kevin Kardashian a lot, uh, Ms. Parker. She she has a book coming out, um, you know, coming in the upcoming months, and she compares herself in the book to Marilyn Monroe. And so the argument was, is she the modern Marilyn Monroe or not? Oh, Lord, why does it matter? <laughs> um, I know. I- I like her a lot. I'm just not a Kim hater. I just been right, yeah. about hate yeah. for really no reason. Um, exactly. I think she turned a bad situation into into her benefit, into a good situation mm-hmm. for her, and was able to build many businesses off of something that could have tore somebody else apart. Right. So for that for that reason, I you know I think that she's a smart businesswoman. I think her entire family is. But yeah, I mean I can see that. I can see the comparison. I mean people are upset mm-hmm. with her as a video game that people pay mm-hmm. real money to shop and look like celebrities and she her game is like number one right yeah. now. So um I can I can I can see that. I think that um um the only difference would be that Marilyn Monroe was all real. Um, you know, they didn't have all the <laughs> all the plastic surgery and that's no shade, but right, she was yeah. um you know, she had the boobs and was very curvy but it was all hers. Um, yeah. As far as physically is concerned, physical is concerned, I think that there is a difference because I don't think Kim's is natural. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm pretty sure her book is going to do well. What about you, Aaron? Kim Kardashian. Hmm. Thinking about herself. Hmm. Big, big surprise. Big shocker. Next. Well, <laughs> well, this is what Next I think one. about it because you know, and someone said this. Earlier, I was watching TV. They said that, you know, Marilyn Monroe back in her day, you know, she was, and not to judge anybody, but, you know, she was addicted to pain, to, I mean, to uh, prescription pills. You know, she was sleeping with married men, and she was the most photographed woman of that time. Kim Kardashian is the most photographed woman of our time. And so, you know, when someone passed away, a lot of times, you know, we focus on all the good, which you're supposed to do. And so a lot of people do think that Kim Kardashian is, in the sense, the modern-day Marilyn Monroe. But there are some people that says that Mel Moreau had acting skills. She had a talent, and they don't really see where Kim, yeah, Kim, where where Kim has a talent. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe actually was an a solid act, you know, actress. Like she actually mm-hmm. was a and singer. Actress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was. Not knocking Kim. I mean, I don't want to say that she doesn't have any talent. Well, she's smart. Obviously, she's smart. Kim is. But I think Kim there's a difference too. I think an you just said. Right. You said Marilyn Monroe had talent, and you could say Kim is not an addict. I was sleeping with married right. men, so I mean, there are things that yeah. you know. I'm very business savvy. Yeah. Working on both sides. Kim is business savvy. Yeah. yeah. Kim is very business savvy. Paid, I say move on. Yeah. 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 I agree. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did anybody watch uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta? They had the season premiere last night. Yeah, I watched it last night, and I am. I have never liked Phaedra, but I am Team Phaedra right now. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna ask you, what, what did you think? Because a lot of people, you know, she got a little backlash because she didn't go to Apollo Terry. What are, What are your thoughts on that? Actually, the comments I read online, a lot of people were supportive of her. If you know, if you live in Atlanta, you know what Apollo does. Right. Um, he was not the greatest husband. Apollo mm-hmm. was in them streets every day. I saw him out every day. There were receipts of him being receipts being the posted online with him being in hotels with different women, which I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think once a woman's fed up, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, she's fed up. She has, I don't think it had to do with him being sentenced or anything. I think she just is done with him regardless if he was going to prison or not. I think she's mm-hmm. done. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I think, but, but I let me just say this, too. I think that every choice have a consequence. Mm-hmm. I do agree with Apollo. I think Apollo was right when he said, save your own marriage because she wanted a husband. She wanted a husband. Her life was complete. But the only thing that was missing were her husband and kids. And she married him without thinking. She went and picked that man up three days after he got out of prison mm-hmm. and to marry her. So. That's what she ended up with. She ended up with somebody who was not mar- who was not ready for marriage. She ended up with a criminal who had no other skill set or no uh, or not the mindset to get out of his criminal ways. Mm-hmm. And she ended up with somebody who was committed to the street and fast money. 
So she yeah. didn't make things through. So that was her that was her consequence. Bad, good or bad, whatever choice we make has a consequence. So she, now she has to deal with raising kids by herself because that's what she chose. But I will mm-hmm. say that her not going, I, I stand beside her 100%. Go ahead, Aaron. What are you going to say? Yeah, um, you know, I agree. Yeah, I Okay, it was sentencing. It was like it was him actually going in chains and handcuffs and going off to prison right then and there. He was just going to sentencing, and he came back home. So all Mm -hmm. this, why wasn't she there for me? I'm like, dude, first of all, I would have been like, babe, I don't want you near the courthouse. I'm a man up. Do what I got to do. You take care of other kids, and we can talk about it later. You know, I don't want y'all being in the spotlight with all this. I don't want y'all being around the cameras or, any, or, or anything. Let me man up, face what I need to face since since I did the crime. I need to man up and do it myself. I, I don't need to have my wife and my children or my wife by herself right there behind me. I, I don't – that – it just seemed very childish to me. It, it seemed like a kid wanting his uh, mommy there. He's very he, immature. He he's is. very mm-hmm. immature. He's very immature. Very, yeah. Very when, immature. when I watched it, what I saw, and I agree with you, uh, Ms. Parker, about when a woman set up, you can tell that this there was there were things that happened prior to this that she right. removed from him. She's completely removed from him. And so, oh, yes. well, she probably doesn't wish anything bad against him, she's not going to be there to support him because she, you know, and I feel like this may have been like a major letdown because he has a family and they have kids and you're still doing this kind of behavior. You know what I mean? Right. So you want to think right. about the consequences when you did it. Yeah. And I honestly yeah. think he talked about divorce. I think she was happy because I think she didn't want to bring it up because she's trying to figure out how to get out of it without paying him a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's why yeah. he said. That's why he said, "I'm not gonna come home to nothing" because he already know Phaedra's already plotting. I think yeah, that's why yeah. she got the whole divorce thing. I think she's doing some research, you know, getting her attorney skills together mm-hmm. to make sure she does it the right way. But yeah. I think that I think that she's been checked out. I think she's just over yeah. it. You yeah. know, because yeah. you know, she, she even said it. She said, you know. Did you think about your entire family when you were doing that? No, he, you know, he was. He's very self-centered. He's immature. Still making young guys on the street corner type decisions when mm-hmm. he didn't have to do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I knew that that man was not bright. Whenever he said on national television that he throws up eight thousand dollars at the strip club. Like right. Nothing. Right. I knew yeah. he was a straight up fool. I knew he was dumb as a box of rocks. I'm like, wow. Are you that right? Mm-hmm. And just yeah. tell him something. It was money that he earned. And everybody yeah. was like, I remember when that episode aired. I was like, earned from what? Like you don't <laughs> like you don't your episodes. I think he makes like I don't like, know what, I think he that, like three three to four five thousand dollars an episode. Yeah, you have yeah. kids. Um, you don't have that. You don't have five thousand dollars to be thrown in a, um, the strip hey, club. Mm-hmm. You right. want to be doing something else. See, he didn't put the people who put two and two together. I know yep. personal printing ain't getting you paid that much. It ain't. Right. It ain't. And that's when he messed up. Then people started investigating and even more. And he, yeah, he just talked too much. Yeah. He just talked and he too was much. arguing with Faze. Whoever he was arguing with during that episode, he was like, somebody was like, oh, Faze was money. And he was like, no, it's my money. It's my money. Right. Oh, that was the yeah. reunion yeah. show. That was on the reunion show when Ken yes said, what do you have yep. $5,000 to throw? And he was like, it's my money. Wow. Yeah. I knew that he was a fool then. I knew that he was a fool. Absolutely. Well, let's switch gear to a happier note. Uh, Kelly Rowland, she gave birth to her son, Titan, and she, uh, over the weekend, uh, shared a picture of him and released a song dedicated to him. What do you thought? Definitely congrats to her. I'm happy for her. Yeah, congratulations. I like Kelly a lot. Because she got married, and, you know, now they're having their child. And, and, you know, and actually, Salon, she's about to get married, too. They just announced that. Yeah, they say she's getting married next week. I hope she don't beat up her husband, but. (laughs) <laughs> well, if, if he don't learn anything, he better learn something from that video. Okay, <laughs> that little man. he better not cross her. He better bow, bow, bow down. I know, right? Bow down. Bow down. Speak, <laughs> speak. speak. yes, this, baby. Love you. Yes. This, this next, this next story, um, kind of bothered me. Last week, a video of Beyonce and Jay Z were at a uh, basketball game, and Beyonce, you know, she seemed a little annoyed. And she uh, was kind of, you know, rocking side to side. She was listening to music, even though there wasn't any visible 
earplugs or anything like that. Um, but what I didn't like about it is that people start saying the shoe was high because I think that people need to be careful with the words that they say about people because Beyonce is not someone you've ever seen or heard of anything of her doing drugs or, or being, you know, in that kind of realm. And so the first video you see of her, maybe not at her best, automatically right. she's on drugs. You know what I mean? Right. Where she could have been sick. She well, something been... was definitely wrong with her. <laughs> well, I'm saying, but why we all have to assume she was high and on drugs? You know what I mean? When that hadn't been well, her Well, say, saying that she's on drugs, I mean, she's shooting up a coke or heroin, and she could be a smoke that little plea. And just <laughs> <laughs> I mean, smoking weed is not that horrible of a thing that people can't say, oh, maybe she smoked a little weed, but someone definitely fought with her. So I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes were on. I, I, some, had, some happened. Barbara, something went wrong. Something went wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, um, all right. So Aretha Franklin, you know, she had a new album out. Aretha Franklin sings the diva classics, and she did an interview um, last week to with Wall Street, uh, Wall Street Online, and an interview. The interviewer asked her about some of the, you know, current. Female artists and asked about Adele. She thought Adele was a young singer, but a great singer. Alicia Keys, great singer. You know, young singer, great Alicia singer. Alicia Keys. Well, listen, great producer. Great producer. They asked her about Taylor Swift, and she took a break and she said, "Gorgeous gowns, nice dresses, <laughs> nice dresses." But I was kind of like a little boy. I think so Taylor are, Swift is very talented. I think he would be throwing shade. The girl is super smart. She I think actually, she's very she smart. To, actually, she needs to be the one teaching a course on how to sell records in 2014. Yeah. Okay, because she's, she's the only one doing it. She is yeah. super smart for her age. She's always been very smart. She's very business-minded. She's very mm-hmm. media savvy. The girl is super smart, and she's talented. So I think all of the shade that be thrown at her is just not called for. Right. I think there are a lot of people out there with worse, with, worse, um, with worse talent. I'm not saying Alicia Keys is horrible, but she cannot perform live on anything. She sounds horrible, except for on her album. <laughs> Who does she don't say that? that um, you know, no, it's that Taylor Swift. She was asking. Oh, this, oh like, she, she needs to sit down. Aretha needs to well, sit she, down. Miss, well, Miss she, Franklin. She didn't, she didn't really say anything. All she said was, like, when, you know, she was talking about the other artists and saying good singer. Mm-hmm. And then they asked about Taylor Swift. She said, "Okay, let's see. Uh, nice dresses, beautiful gowns. That's shade. That is shade. That is shade. <laughs> that, that is better shade. And I'll tell you what. I'll come back to. I love. I love Aretha, but I think sometimes we got to step back and and, yeah. and and really think about like you know how your response is going to affect people because Taylor Swift had, as she said before, that she looks up to her. You know, yeah, the yeah. never. She and the thing about Taylor is she never throws any shade at anybody. She, she does. Never, she Very doesn't. open to everyone. She she likes all music. She's you know what I mean. She's I don't see why people just throw so much shade at her. She never yeah. ever throws shade at anybody. Yeah, and she's a great role model. Black right? folks throwing shade at her. This one, I, like, why is is it the black folks that's throwing shade at her? Like she and she's selling she records. Cool. She yeah. cool as T- Taylor Swift is cool. She's talented. She is gorgeous. The girl can actually model. I mean, she is beautiful. You know, and yeah. and. And she has a really warm spirit. I mean, this people just hate. Miss Miss Franklin is known for throwing shade, though, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Well, when it came when it came to Nicki Minaj, she said, "I'll pass." Last last story, we gotta move on. Um, Ninety-year-old man. I know you've probably heard about this in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Ninety-year-old Arnold Abbott was arrested for feeding homeless. He's been feeding homeless. And for a lot of them, for the past 23, yeah, 23 years, and uh, the new mayor has come in, and he made this law saying that you cannot do that. The mayor has come back and said that he doesn't mind him feeding the homeless, he needs to go a block over. But uh, Mr. Abbott refused. He said he's going to stay here, and he keeps coming every Wednesday, feeding, because he's been doing it 23 years. He said this is his community. This is where he wants to give back. But he could face up to 60 days in jail and a $500 fine. What are your thoughts? Go across the street, Mr. Abbott. Just go across the street. No, I don't think so. I think you're going to arrest the mayor and throw him in jail. How is it? How are you going to make of of everything that's going on? Right? We need more, mm-hmm. com, more kinder, more compassionate. How do you yeah. make kind and compassionate a crime? Mm-hmm. No matter what, where the person was. 
is it on is it on public property or is it on private property, Stephen? They like they on the beach. Oh, I thought. Oh, see, I thought it was on on like on private property or something, and that the owners wanted. Oh, to he passed on. a law wow. similar to he passed a law similar, to, and that's what they were talking about in the view today. That law almost sounds like uh, like don't see the animals, like almost like homeless right. people are disposable. Oh, like, yeah. And, okay. Yeah, well, that's like yeah. came in and okay. passed the law. Don't feed the homeless, like. He pretty yeah. much is saying that he, it, just like, you know, they say don't feed the animals because the animals are going to come back for more. They're going to keep coming mm-hmm. back and keep feeding them. That's his attitude towards people. No, oh, like, wow. he have that okay. attitude towards people. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah. I thought maybe it was like some, some private business, you know, pro- property or something. Okay, this is on the public public street or something. Okay, well, then. Yeah, public beach, yeah. That, that's not cool, yeah. That mayor is, oh, these people are crazy. I'm telling you. They are crazy. People need to vote. Tell y'all vote, people vote. My go God, vote, go vote. And they said here Ooh. in Georgia, less than thirty, um, only twenty, thirty-five percent of the people here in Georgia voted. That's sad. I was so disappointed, y'all. I was. I was I, I, mm. They didn't show up. People just they didn't, they didn't show, show up. up. They didn't show up. But, but we'll talk about it on a later show because there are some reasons why they think people didn't Absolutely. show up. Absolutely. Yeah. But we're gonna uh, definitely go to commercial break and come back with talented R B B Taylor right back after this. You're listening to the Stephen Knight Talk Show on EOTM Radio. You're listening now. You're listening to the Stephen Knight Talk Show on EOTM Radio. The Stephen Knight Show. Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on EOTMRadio.com. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Before we get to our first guest, I want you to tweet us at Stephen Knight Show, SHO, or Facebook us. Uh, question of the day, what would you do if you won $10,000? Simple question, tell us what you do with it. All right, let's go to our first guest. Renowned musician b has been deemed the Stevie Wonder of hip-hop with his ability to simultaneously play four instruments, piano, drums, guitar, and organ. But that's only the beginning of his story. He's been endorsed by Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, the Supremes, the Temptations, and the Marvelettes, and many more uh, because of his talent as a hip-hop artist with um, consummate musicality. Please help me welcome very talented B. Taylor. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. How you doing? (laughs) I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on. You know, I mean, you have an amazing following with over 225,000 Facebook fans, 80,000 Twitter followers, and more than 1 million views on YouTube. How do you feel, you know, that you put out this music, this great music, and people are are attracted to it? Um, Man, I feel great, man. Um, Just having fun, you know, just trying to be a positive light in music. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we got enough going on in the world, and and I, you're getting with these Motown legends, that's what I learned is they made music for everybody and they made it in a in a in a positive light, you know, and with like I yeah. said, being an ambassador for the military, there's so much going on inside the war with all these terrorist groups and mm-hmm. ISIS groups and our military only gets pretty much thought about like during special holidays like Veterans Day or yeah. or, or Memorial Day and so they've been backing me from day one from the higher ups and so it was it's cool because now I'm able to be a light and a voice to, to American people to be like, hey, let's support our troops, let's support their families, let's support our veterans because without them there's no US of A, you know. So Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was talking about your military background. You were in the military, uh, yeah. and so t- talk a little bit more about you know what you what you currently do in, uh, for them. I know you you honest, were you honorably discharged. Yeah, I was honorably, okay. honorably uh, discharged from the military. Got out, mm-hmm. um, and um, basically I'm an ambassador. Like I uh, go around, and they had me like I shot some video. I you get to use you know, whatever military personnel or things for videos, but I go speaking at, around my music schedule, speaking to schools, recruits, and veterans, giving them a positive story. Because I had a positive story coming out of a unique situation where a hip-hop artist is backed by the higher-ups. It's very unique um, from the Pentagon's perspective. And then I was able to meet the Motown legends 
which they've all endorsed the hip hop, which was very unique. So the military felt I had a, a positive story because there's so many stories about veterans, which is true. At 22 every 22 seconds, a veteran kills itself, or you have PTSD, wow. you got wounded or warriors, but you never show like a positive story where a troop comes out and he meets the great Motown legends and he does a record with you know Pauly yeah. Barrett in CIS. So and me being an African American hip hop artist was made the whole story so you because like I said there's not where you would see the Pentagon like sitting down with a hip hop artist asking mm-hmm. how can we bring this disconnect so it was it was been cool because I feel like I've created a niche which they've said I've created a niche to bring together the military with the music industry. I mean you have it for country artists do a lot in rocks but like as far as the urban and the hip hop there's never been someone to where they backed that was a military person that was in music and bring those two together, especially with the following of hip hop and pop and urban music. So I've been blessed, yeah. man, and just trying to start this movement where people like yourself and hosts around the country is support what I'm doing it and because the Motown Legends told me this is bigger than Motown was it because it's involving not only the Motown legacy but it's involving the United States military the biggest organization, most powerful organization in the world. So it's bigger than me. So that's what I've been doing to get um, the DJs and the people around the country to be on this movement to let them know that I'm that voice for music for the military and, and we just keep it every day, not waiting twice a year, but doing it 365. So. Absolutely. And you've opened up for Ludacris, uh, Snoop Dogg, and, and Ray J. Tell us about that. Yeah, man, opened up for quite a bit of people, man. And, like, I did my Buzz single first with Ray. Ray J and Brandy are great friends. And then I went on with Pauly Perez from NCIS. But uh, I've done a lot, man. Um, the water, Aqua Hydrate, which is Diddy's Water, and uh, Mark Wahlberg mm-hmm. that sponsored and endorsed me. It's just I've been uh, dealing with E.I. Lawrence, the vice president of Cash Money, who manages Drake and Wayne. Yeah has been influential on this and this music. So it's, it's just like people coming. It's just natural, you know. It's just a natural fit about one life helping, changing, and saving someone's lives and, and being positive, you know. Uh, I think I was hearing one of the – one of your news people talking about is just people just be hating on people and like right, you know I'm yeah. endorsed by you know I'm endorsed by the country world and by Mr. K- the Cash family Gene Cash who's Johnny's cousin is one of my big endorsers and I was hearing her talking about Taylor Swift and it's like yeah you got talented people that never say nothing about nobody they just mm-hmm. you know they're just mm-hmm. cool man they just sell records like she cool like you know yeah. I met her before she's just cool she don't say nothing that's what I am it's like how did I come in being the Motown back by and learn from the Motown greats and then the U.S. military? Like, what can you say bad about the military and Motown? You really can't go into a discussion where you hating on Stevie Wonder. Like, you, right. you just can't. Mm-hmm. You can't go there or you yeah. can't say something bad about a troop on national TV and say, you know, screw the military or forget them troops and them men and women. I mean, it's just not right. So I, I kind of like what she was saying. It's about people putting out great messages and records. We need to get behind more of that instead of, like, just talking about everybody just to be on TV and just hating right. on if somebody's yeah. great with a positive thing. Join it, man, and don't hate on it or wish them the best. But hating on it is it makes no sense. <laughs> it just yeah, exactly, makes... it's true. Especially because when you tell us, so for example, you know she's someone that's such a, a positive influence for her generation. You know, because there's so many people out there that aren't positive. You know, we exactly. sit on TV every day with some of these reality shows, and so exactly. to have someone positive, you should you know encourage exactly. that. I, I definitely agree. Exactly, man. So that's. This is what I'm doing, man, and trying to show us in the right way that, you know, we can do good mu- music. And I feel like like a lot of artists did, like, do um, that's uh, real cool is, like, Flow Rider, man, and, you know, Pitbull. They came from hip-hop backgrounds, but they're doing these international, world-renowned songs, man, <laughs> that make it mm-hmm. feel so good, man. Yeah. And, you know? Enjoying life. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah, just enjoying life, man. That's what music is. There's no violence. And if you look up music, and I know I was in the military and dealt high up, like if you look up a music in the dictionary, there's no, you're not standing with like a gun and, uh-huh. you know, tanks and war when you see music. This has never been the theme. So right. 
Music right. is not to do that, you know. Music is not to right. hurt people. It's supposed to help people through the power of your voice. And mm-hmm. if you got an opportunity to reach millions of people, I mean, people don't dream of getting an opportunity to be on a big stage to reach millions of people. So if you're going to do that, what Motown taught it is what Barry Gordy and he taught, if you're going to be up on the stage and you influence people in a big way, if you're going to have exactly. that opportunity, you know, so. Yeah. Well, talk about your single, your new single, uh, Get Get Em Up. Yeah, man, uh, it's a feel good song leading into the whole plan of the One Life the Movement. I I live in Vegas, so it was just about coming together, you know, feeling good. People come from all over the world to Vegas to have a mm-hmm. good time, and a lot everybody gets their hands up, whether they're like in church or at a game or at a club. So I wanted to make a feel good single leading into the depth of what One Life the Movement was. So I wanted to get everybody on something feel good for radio and uh, have fun with it. So That's awesome. We're going to be playing that in our next half hour. But listen, cool. B-Taylor, tell everyone where they can follow you, keep up with everything you have going on. Yeah, man, they can go to btaylor.com, and then my social sites are at btaylorofficial. You can look them up um, for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. That's B Taylor Official, and keep following. And we're moving around the country, and uh, we're just going to be a positive light. And so if somebody, you know, whatever it is, that's what I tell everybody. It's about how you affect some. Just touch one person. Help change and save one person. That's the message of One Life, the movement. So, Absolutely. And listen, we appreciate you coming on tonight, and you definitely continue a successful career, and thank you for being a positive light in the world. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. You too. Now take it easy. Yeah. Now. All right, all right. And for more information about Beto, you can go to our Facebook page. There's a link. We'll be right back with Life Coach Robert Booker. You're listening to the Stephen Knight Talk Show on EOTM Radio. You're listening now. You're listening to the Stephen Knight Talk Show on EOTM Radio. The Stephen Knight Show, Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on EOTMRadio.com. Our next guest is a lifestyle coach who encourages people to change their lives from the inside out. He is a... ISSA certified personal trainer and lifestyle coach. Please help me welcome the lifestyle coach himself, Robert Booker. Welcome to the show. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Man, I'm pretty good. I appreciate you having me on tonight. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, we, anytime we have people, we always try to bring on different people who kind of can, can help us improve our lives and get the place we want to be. So tell us, right. you know, how you kind of got involved in this. Where, where did you know this is what you wanted to do? Man, a couple of years ago, I was uh, I was working in corporate America, and uh, I basically got laid off. Um, mm-hmm. I kept applying for jobs, kept applying for jobs, and 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 I could I couldn't get hired, man. I, you know, I was pretty qualified. I was at my current job for five plus years, and um, I just couldn't get couldn't get uh couldn't get hired. I uh, I started uh started working out, going to the gym, you know, just to take up some time, and, and I started to see my body transform. And, you know, mm-hmm. as I started to see my body transform, my friends and family were asking me, you know, what, what are you doing and, and, and how are you doing it and can we work out with you and things of that sort. And um, I just started helping people and I realized, man, I really love to help people. I really like to help people reach their goals and, and not just inside of the gym but outside of the gym. So that's how it all started, man. I was kind of forced into a situation and I just started doing something I love, man, and I made a career out of it. Wow. And I mean, they always yeah. say that, have you found it to be the case for yourself? They always say that when you're doing something you love, it's not really a job. You know what I mean? Man, it's, it's a, it's a lifestyle. And, and it never feels like work. It never feels like yeah. work. It's one of the best feelings, waking up in the morning, doing what you love. It's just like, you know, you don't have a set schedule. You're just, you're just doing what you love. It doesn't feel like a job. You know what I mean, of course, you got to put in the overtime and the hours, but it's mm-hmm. always it's, it's always love. You know what I mean? It's It's, it's not something... It's not like you working for somebody else and you got to answer to somebody. Nah, man, it, it 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 just it's awesome, man. I really appreciate you know God giving me this gift and and, yeah. and helping me bless other people. And, and you know yeah. you call yourself the the lifestyle coach. What what made you come up with that title? Okay, so be, I was you know I started off. I'm just a personal trainer. 
um, helping people lose weight, you know, working with plenty of NFL athletes and, you know, just just everyday people. But Mm -hmm. the one thing that I found that was different about me and my training style is that all of my clients came to me. um, We always wound up talking about things outside of just working out. And I always wound up helping my clients basically change their lifestyle, not just their Mm -hmm. body, but, Mm -hmm. but, but, but just changing their lifestyle, you know, not just physically and, and nutritionally, but mentally and spiritually as well. Um, you know, being raised in the church my whole life, you know, of course I love God and I believe God and and, right. and, and he's the backbone of my life. So that's my, my number one, my number one thing Now you gotta, you gotta love God and you gotta show him some love and he's the, he's the author of everything. So, you know, I don't, I don't push that on people, but, <clears throat> but it's just something that we talk about in all of my sessions. And, and when people lead me, they don't lead me with just reaching physical goals, you know, they may lose right. 20 pounds, 25 pounds, but they also adapt the lifestyle. And that's mm-hmm. the biggest thing, you know, they learn how to eat right and they learn how to live right. You know, some of them may start reading that Bible. Some of them may, may really start going to church. You know, it's, 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 it's different every case, but that's how I came up with that, with the lifestyle yeah. coach. I just try to change people's lifestyles. And I think that's important because, you know, if you're trying to make changes, if you're only doing it for the physical um, aspect of it, you're not really – you can still look in the mirror and see the same person that you saw when you were 25 pounds heavier. But, like, I right. like that you're, you're doing it from the inside out. So you're, it's a full makeover of the whole body, the whole yeah. spirit. And, yeah, I like that. I like that. Yep, 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 absolutely. So you're working on a lot of projects now. I know – tell us about Motivation Mondays. All right, Motivational Mondays is basically uh, Monday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, I, I share I share a motivational minute with with whoever calls in, and we we have prayer, just pushing people to reach their goals. That's really it. Mm-hmm. Just pushing people to reach their goals. Um, you know, getting the week started off good. You know, everybody has long weeks, man. People, yeah. especially these, especially folks that are working in corporate America and having to deal mm-hmm. with people standing over their backs and stuff, man. I'm really just trying to encourage people to you know step outside of that and and start seeing what God really has for you to do. And, and you know, and start and start start pursuing that. Um, right. That's, that's basically it, man. I just really want to help change some lives. That's it. And if I could do it over a phone call or some prayer, man, that, uh, that's that's some, that's mission accomplished right there. Yeah. And then you find because it's a group of people, you know, they always say when uh, two people come together, you know, man. Uh, that's that's, do you, that's do it. You see that? That's yeah, with the group. Yeah, that's that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, that's, that's it. A great that's idea. It. And then you have something called cardio yeah. cardio and cocktail. Tell us about that. All right, so cardio and cocktails is an event that um, I started back in Baltimore. I'm, I'm from Baltimore originally. I live in Atlanta right now, but um, okay. I started back in Baltimore, and um, you know, it was we. The first event we did was it was amazing, man. We had over 250 women come out. Um, it was in a club setting. Uh, we ha- had a live DJ. Me and two other trainers, we just basically went at it, and it was amazing, man. I don't want to get too many details because we got Mm -hmm. some stuff coming up in the beginning of the year, but definitely look out for that cardio cocktails, man. We're going to do something big, but you'll you'll hear about it again for sure. Okay. I definitely, you know, I love cardio, I love cocktails, so I'm sure. Right, right. That's that's it right there. Exactly. (laughs) Okay. And they're coming to the house of Georgia. Tell us about that. All right, so on a regular basis, I'm going to be going there to speak with the youth, just empowering them and motivating them to do better, um, teaching them about health and wellness, and uh, basically just holistic living. Um, you know, they're in a particular situation, and it may not be the best situation for them, but I'm just, just going to try to, you know, uplift them a little bit and, and just help them out with their lives, you know, from a young age. Mm-hmm. You know, if, we, if, if I can help, you know, youth and children, uh, you know, they'll come – into a lot, you know, they'll come into a lot of things um, as kids. You know, as kids a day, man, they're dealing with bullying, they're dealing with yeah. so many different things. You know what I mean? And, and and if I can if I can empower them at a young age, they'll they'll grow up to be some some great adults. And that's that's what I'm trying to do over there at the Covenant House. That's great. That's real great. Yeah. So if, if I know if I go on Instagram and I do hashtag Be Believe Pursue, a lot right. of content and motivational information comes up. What does that mean? Okay, so let me let me start with C Believe Pursue. C Believe Pursue is basically uh, teaching people to see their goals 
believe in them and pursue them. It's really that simple. It doesn't have to necessarily mean in fitness. It can be in anything that you're trying to do in life, going back to mm-hmm. school. It can be saving money, anything. You just have to see it, believe in it, and then pursue it. So basically when I hashtag see, believe, pursue on, on Instagram or Twitter, it's basically I'm giving motivational, you know, quotes or, or showing exercises and things of that sort. I'm just basically constantly trying to motivate people to see better, be better, do better. That's what it's all about, man. I'm trying to help people live a progressive lifestyle, you know, keep that open mind and, and, and just, just keep moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know that, you know, you're in Atlanta, but you know, you help clients all over because you actually do video training sessions. Is that correct? Yep. I do online Skype training. I have a couple clients right now. And uh, one of them is on tour with Usher. Um, mm-hmm. and another one, another one is actually in Atlanta. Uh, he just can't get to me because he lives, you know, you know, Georgia is a big, big state. So lives, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So our schedules don't line up. So yeah, man, it doesn't matter where you're at. I'm willing to help you. It doesn't matter as long as you got an hour of your day and you got an email address and you can set up Skype or, or, or uh, uh, FaceTime. We can make it happen. No excuses, man. I, I try to eliminate yeah. any, any excuse. Absolutely. Tell, tell, how does it feel for you? You know, you five years ago you were working in corporate America. And now your life is really dedicated to helping other people, you know, achieve goals and reach levels they never thought they could reach. How does that feel for you on a personal note? Man, it's, it's, I really love it. I love it. I like seeing people reach their goals. I like helping people, yeah. like I said. So mm-hmm. it, it helps. it helps me, man. You know, it, it helps me feel like, you know, I'm I'm doing my due diligence in life, man. I, you know, God has given me this gift. God has, has has blessed me with some things. That's all I'm doing is sharing it. You know what I mean? I'm I'm yeah. I'm not the perfect person. You know what I mean? I don't have it all together, but I just right. you know just try to pass on what I do know and help people. You know, just just be empowered, man. Just educate people. You know, help them evolve to to people that they really want to be. Sometimes they don't even know that they want to be that. You mm-hmm. know, so, so you know, I love it, man. I love it. You know, and it helps me. You know, do better in life as well. We definitely appreciate all that you're doing. Tell everybody where they can connect with you online. Um, on Instagram, you can you can catch me at Robert Booker underscore. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Rob D A Trainer, Rob the Trainer, and uh, Facebook is uh, Facebook uh, backslash R B the Lifestyle Coach. Of course, you can email me at Rob the Trainer the number one at gmail dot com. And we definitely appreciate you being on tonight and continue to encourage everyone. We we thank you for it. We need people like you in the world. More people are doing this kind of thing. Just think what kind of world we'd be in right now. Man, <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it, man. It's my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. All right. You have a good one. You too. Have a good one. And for information about Robert Book, you can go to our uh, Facebook page. We'll right back after this. Hello, I'm Ronald Hatcher, Aaron Hatcher's father. Aaron has muscular dystrophy and cerebral palsy. I'm Rita Gray from Betty White's Off Their Rockers, but unfortunately, he's no longer with us now. Each year, thousands of cases go unreported, where children with disabilities and special needs get abused in their schools. Our mission is to protect the child, as well as the teachers who educate them. Please, help us in our effort to stop the abuse and promote safety by donating to positive initiatives in care of Aaron Hatcher's They Can't Talk But We Can, Inc. P.O. Box 2392, Roswell, Georgia, 30077. Or visit our website at They Can't Talk But We Can, Inc. dot org. Let's not have another loving, innocent child like Aaron die. Remember, they can't talk. But we can. Call now, 877-566-2451. Metro, Metro Melodica creates, performs, markets, and dis, dis, distributes music almost completely in the digital domain. Staying true to their electronic human state, the ground remains in the digital domain when portraying themselves visually as a means of keep, to keep their listeners' attention and focus on what's most important, music. They have achieved 12 single lady episodes placements in season one, two, and three to date. Please help me welcome the talented Metro Melodica. Melodica. Welcome to the show. Did we lose you? All right, well, we might have lost them. Man, I want to hear them. They have some great music, which we'll be playing in our next half hour. I'm here, I'm told they're on. What'd you say, Steven? There you go. You hear it? Yes, sir. Is this Keith? No, it's Ron. 
Ron, okay. Oh, no, not, <laughs> not you, eh, Ron. We're talking about like that. Oh, my bad. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. All right. Later. <laughs> That's okay. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. But I guess, nope. I guess we lost them, but what we'll do, we'll, um, we have to get them back on because they have some great music. We'll be playing our next half hour. I want to let you know that you can go to their website. There's a link on our Facebook page so you can hear about them. So when we have them back on, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. They have some great music. But let's switch gears and go into our playlist. Um, as you know, we receive music from people all over the country who want to be featured during this segment. Each week we select ours to play on our playlist. And tonight our playlist features songs of both independent and major artists, including B. Taylor, who just spoke to us, Electro Melodica, Kristen Radar, and of course, me. I got to play my music as well. <laughs> if you're interested in being featured on Stephen's playlist, please email us at the Stephen Knight Show at gmail.com and attach one or two songs, your bio, and one or two promotional pictures. And we definitely look forward to hearing your music. Remember, it has to be edited for, uh, for radio, so no cursing. The first song is by B. Taylor. It's his brand new single called Get Em Up. Check it out and enjoy Stephen's playlist. Step right up to the VIP Don't wait at the bar Cause the drink's on me Get your hands in the mud Building to get fuck wild. Every senorita is feeling my style. Pop them bottles, I represent the lado. Where's all my fit and thick, gorgeous models? I see a bad hey, shorty in the corner. She's knowing this hook is about to push up on her. Relax, baby doll, you know I'm coming. You're about to get a different show like fill up drumming. Drink up, drink up tequila, then hit your boy with that sexual fever. Stop, don't give me the pennies just yet. The well's probably dry, plus I love it wet. It's VT, so you know I got your back. Pay attention to that line, cause it's a real fact. A G, it's never been my nature, but I'll give it to you just like a real gangster. With pretty ladies that accommodate us Got no time for haters I got the nice skaters Walk in the club and everybody Show me love Call my man beast if a dude act up Put my hands up While I put my pants up Do my damn thing While I, while I bang bang Liquid coat Sipping and I'm hitting Never slipping on my pimping Then I'm dipping Let's go
All right, we're in luck. Our last guest is here, Metro Melodica. Uh, they create, perform, market, and distribute music almost completely in the digital domain. They are true to their electronic human state. The ground remains in the digital domain when portrayed when portraying themselves visually. It means they want to keep the listeners' attention focused on what's most important, and that's the music. Uh, they've achieved 12 single A episode placements in seasons one, two, and three. Please help me welcome the talented. That's your Melodica. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? Is this Keith? This is Keith. I'm here with Sarah Kane and Mate of okay. Metro, Metro Melodica. Melodica, okay. Yeah, I Melodica. I well. <laughs> well, I love it. I love it. A couple of times. <laughs> it's okay, I had a couple of times when I was practicing. I was practicing. <laughs> but no, I but people. I appreciate the one point you got me, though. Absolutely. Thank you for being on. And we're going to play some of your music uh, after the interview, but you're the founder, Keith, and let me talk a little bit about your background. Okay. Um, uh, if you have the computer on, can you hear me? Yeah, because we're going to play back. A little backup, background. No. Okay, but it says, but you're a recording academy voting member um, of the producing engineers wing and has served on the recording academy board of governors and gospel committee. Um, Philadelphia chapter. Your music has reached top 20 on Billboard dance charts, regular, and you regularly appear on several television networks, including Bravo, VH1, and MTV. And then, of course, you talk about your the group uh, being on 12 single ladies episodes, uh, the music on first, second, and third season. So, wow. <laughs> How does that feel to, to have such success with, you, with, this, with the group? I've been in the building for a while. I uh, started out Originally came into the business as a songwriter mm-hmm. and continue to be a songwriter to this day um, and producer, like I said, the Recording Academy Connection, everything pretty much musically has been a blessing um, throughout my career. And yeah. probably in, in about, I think it was around 2009, or no, no, around 2011, just started talking about a way to kind of have a focus on the music itself where the industry was changing and that, you know, image was such a focus for every artist that came out. Um, mm-hmm. And really just even talking to Tay and I, and we're talking about it, you know, in a coffee shop one day. And it really just came to a point where electromelodica is a sound, which yes, right. it, incorporates, it incorporates the electronic, but the acoustic um, sound of it. And then as far as what it is, is really, just being able to create music without being restrained restrained by an image. So, right, yeah. You know, we're not locked in by image as far as what songs are written, you know, the, the production, what genre it is. It's really just the freedom to create music and let the music kind of take you where it needs to take you rather mm-hmm. than the image. So essentially it's really all about the music because, you know, a lot of uh, entertainers and, and artists, they – you know, their face is their brand. Your brand is your yeah. music, right? Completely, completely, yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, even, I like even when I... Go ahead. I thought I liked that. Yeah, appreciate it. I mean, you know, even, you know, if you go through your record, your parents' record collection, like I did when I was a kid, you know, I would look at the records, listen to them, the song would take me a certain place. I would look at the credits, see who was doing what, but I wasn't really, you know, it didn't rely necessarily on on a video all the time to mm-hmm. kind of tell you what you're supposed to think about the music. The song is supposed to do that. The music is supposed to make you feel that. And that's right. just sort of what we're promoting and not necessarily focusing on the image. Like just, you, you know, let the song tell you what it's supposed to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what made you, you know, after such success that you've had, what made you decide to, um, to form this group? Well, it's really a collective. It's a collective of vocalists, um, musicians, myself as producer, and top line writers which, who are in my camp. So it's really collective of us that we just create music. Some of the music is for other artists, but there's certain things that are just designated to be for electro So it's not necessarily a, a group in the regular sense that people are used to. It's really a collective mm-hmm. of just music people 
who come together for certain records or a project or EP that we do. And, you know, it's, have, we have featured vocalists occasionally, like Sarah Kane's featured on the Go Singer, which you'll probably hear tonight. Um, mm-hmm. Marco was featured on um, Stars, which is the other singer that we're releasing. You know, these they're artists in their own right. Okay. And But they appear on Electro Melodica Records in this particular case. Nate is a writer in the camp and also sings with her own group. Um, so it's really a collective rather than a group in the sense that, you know, most people are used to it. Okay, okay, I got you. And Natalia, are you on the line? I am, I'm here. Okay, so tell us about, you know, how how it's been, uh, you know, working in this group. You know, it, it, it's very, I think it's very uh, creative because, like I said previously, most people, it's about their image, about what they look like, you know. But, right. you know, working in this group is really about the music. How is that? How is that different, maybe from uh, you know other music ventures you've done? You know, well, um, I've actually, like Lion said, like he said, I've I've been in a group for for many years, so I do know okay. that side of it. You know, mm-hmm. but I always take it back. I always take it back to that um, to that time, actually, when I was when I was with the group and we met Lion to be our producer. But I always knew that writing was my first passion, and I came to him kind of on the side and said, "Hey, I want to write. You know, give me a chance," and he did. Uh, he came, kind of gave me a little test, and you know that was many, many years ago. And I guess I passed the test because I'm still here. So <laughs> I, really, I really consider it a blessing to be able to get on stage with my group and sing and, and do the music that we do. But I always have what we do with Electra Melodica as an outlet to to write all my other emotions or all my other genres yeah. and styles that I like to write. So I really I, I enjoy it so much, and it's just so exciting when. You know, I write something and another artist comes in and, and, and kind of puts their stank on it. It's like it's nothing more rewarding than that. You know, and, and, and that's interesting. I was talking to someone um, the other day because, you know, I'm an artist as well, and, you know, I don't love to write. I write because it's smart. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, I, but for me, I, I, I feel some kind of way if I were to write a song for someone else and for them to sing. You know what I mean? I only want to write for myself. So, uh, it's different. It's good to hear from a different perspective. Someone who you love to see that you love to see, you know, that she can write a song and let another artist shine and do their thing on it. What 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 feeling does it was that bring to you when you get to hear the finished product? I mean, it's like um, you know, this is the kind of age old, you know, corny cliche, but it it really is like the birth of a baby from when you have yeah. the idea, you know, laying in the bed or riding on the train mm-hmm. or whatever. It's just a lot idea, and then you put it on paper, then you bring it to the studio, and you lay down the rough version, and then you come back, and you hear, like, someone else who really put their spin on it, and it's a complete right, yeah. song. And then to take it mm-hmm. to another level, you know, you turn on MTV or VH1, and it's, like, playing, you know, and it's right. just a process that, that I'm so grateful for because, you know, it's, being a female, I kind of understand more because, you, you know, you're a guy, and guys kind of stick to their style, but... It's just like when a female changes her hair, you know, some days you like short hair, some days you like long hair, right. some days you like dress, some days you wear sneakers, you know. Yeah, so yeah. You know, with my group, we do a certain kind of music, and we kind of stick to that. But the fun of writing different genres and different songs, it's kind of like changing my look and changing my style, you know. So mm-hmm. it, it's, it's refreshing, and it keeps me on my toes, and it actually makes my writing better. And I look wow. I look up to those, to those writers who, who like the, you know, the, 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 the writers out there who can write anything from country to gospel to rock to pop. Oh, yeah. I think it's so amazing, you know, so that's what mm-hmm. I strive to be. Yeah. And so and so you, you're singing lead on Go, is that correct? So, that's actually Sarah Kane who's sitting here with I'm me. Sorry. I love that. Okay, Sarah, yeah. I'm sorry. So, Sarah, no. tell, us about, tell us about Go and about your experience with the group. Tell me, uh, hi, uh, tell, tell you about my experience with the song, you mean? Well, you, well yeah, working with the group and, and the song Go. Yeah. Um, well, like he said, we all have our own uh, respective things that are, I guess, our respective hustles that we all mm-hmm. grind on every day. But um, I think the what we all have collectively here is that we all like to do something that's we all care about what's best for the song. So right, it's yeah. nice to kind of just walk into a room and be like, okay, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about this. It's about like what is best for this song right now, mm-hmm. you know. And if you're as a singer, I really am a student of the game where I'm trying to understand how to express what the song is about. I'm a writer as well, so I really care about making the song sound like what the lyrics are talking about. So, right, yeah. um, you know, so, I mean, it's it's actually very easygoing, 
working here. It's a very easygoing environment. Um, I think that if you brought the wrong energies here, it probably wouldn't work well. But, you know, you have a lot of calm energies here, and everybody just no ego, and we just go hard. So. Do, you, do you feel like that you, you all make each other better when you're working together? Outside of your own, you know, individual works, but like collaboratively, do you make do you find yourself you you bring the best out of each other? I can say what I can say is that I feel like what's good is that we all really know who we are in the room. Okay. So like okay. I I kind of know how to bring the best out in myself, but you know, um, I will say that I don't feel like anybody's disturbing my vibe. It's like, hey, Sarah, you're here for a reason. Let's do you. You mm-hmm. know, like okay. so, so everybody feels free to be the best version of themselves around each other, yeah. I think. Yeah. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, who is behind, who sings lead on Stars? I know it's a male and female duet. Right. Um, DeMarco was going to call in. I don't know if he made it in, but okay. DeMarco was singing the lead on Stars. And um, I, don't, I don't know if he's there here or not, but, yeah, and Mate does the second verse. So it's sort of basically a duet. And the two okay. of them do the lead vocals on that song. Okay. And and, yeah. and did I did I talk to everyone? Am I missing someone? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. This is everybody this year. Okay, I want to make sure I got everyone in. But t- so tell us about you. You decided to release the two singles last month simultaneously. What what was the uh, the strategic method behind that? One. You're not late, actually, because they'll be officially released in December. But um, so okay. yeah, so we're right on time. So we appreciate the the promo out because it was right on time. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but they're very one. They're very two. They're two very different records. Um, you know, Stars is really a kind of a throwback R and B duet, sort of something like you know when I was growing up, uh, I used to love Loose Ends. They mm-hmm. had like you know songs like. Uh, slow down and hanging on a string, and it's kind of on that vibe. And go is really like a slow burning, dramatic R and B pop ballad. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, and yeah. and the vocal is, you know, on the two records are, are different approaches, different voices. Um, the consistency is really just comes in, you know, in the you know the standard of the writing and the production, you know what I mean? We just try to you know, hold a standard up to what we do. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So what do, what do you want uh, everyone to know about Electro Melodica? What, what, what is the, the takeaway uh, to make people, you know, obviously you all have a great fan base and people love your work. Um, well, what do you want new listeners to take away from? Really just to... Check it out and really just, you can, I'm pretty sure you'll find something that you can get into musically because, mm-hmm. you know, we write from the heart, you know what I mean? And we write from experiences or things that we know from other people. Uh, you know, like Natej had the idea for stars originally, and then I kind of came in at the end and just tweaked the hook. Go, even though it's a female, Sarah is singing that song. But I actually wrote the lyrics to that song, and obviously okay. it comes from a totally different perspective. But as a songwriter, that's what we do. So we're really just 100% about the music. And what I love about music, what we're able to get into it, is it being able to take you somewhere or take you away from something. You know what I mean? Like right, yeah. Thinking or feeling. And I think if people take Let Let the Melodica out, they will definitely – enjoy just getting into the music. It's not about the image. What we do what we do show and is why is like how the music came about. So you'll see the credits on everything and, you, and if you get the free download now before it hit I, hits iTunes, you can see the credits, who did what, how it was put together. We, you know, some occasionally we post videos behind the scenes of when that record was being made. So you can get into it from that aspect. Okay. Um, but it really ultimately it's about the music, you know, we're not you know, coming up with crazy videos that don't have anything to do with the song. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's really right. just like, <laughs> you, know, the music, you know, love it. Hopefully, you know, tell some, tell some friends about it. Yeah. And we're not going to, you know, we will always give you a song, you know what I mean? A, a real song with some hot beats and just think that kind of maybe want to get into music in the first place. 
You know, I mean, it's not it's not like, you know, we don't tone down the lyrics just for the sake of the beat. They can right. they can yeah. coexist together. Exactly. You know I, mean? can, I agree. So, yeah. So that would be well, it, you know. Right. Well tell well tell everyone I want everyone to say their name, where we can follow you, where we can, you know, stay in tune with everything that's going on with not only the group but your individual careers. Definitely. Well, I'll let them I'll let them okay. shout out their their uh, perspective Instagram handles and Twitter handles and then we'll come back. Yeah. Okay. Hi. All right, so I'm Sarah Kane. You can reach me on Twitter or Instagram or even um Facebook at Sarah Kane Music. That's S A R A H uh K A N E M U S I C. Uh my first album is coming out um in spring of two thousand fifteen. Definitely a very mm. big uh soul feel mixed with some rock and um you know, definitely representing Philly. So mm-hmm. that's me. Congrats. <laughs> Hey, this is Miss Hay, and um, you can find me uh, with my band, The Good News. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at What's The Good News or on Facebook, The Good News. My partner's going to kill me because she handles our Twitter, so I'm going to leave that alone, but <laughs> just look for The Good News. You can also uh, subscribe to our YouTube page, The Good News, um, and uh, you can look for us to be releasing our first single also in spring of 2015. All right. And yeah, definitely check out uh, Groove Control Productions, that's the website for the production company which all this music stems from. That's gcdigi, like digital.com. And for everything Electro Melodica, it's just at Electro Melodica, which is L E K T R O M E L O D I C A. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything. And we're for a big treat. We're about to play the song Go. I can't wait for everyone to hear it. It's a great song. We're going to play Go and Stars. You guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I wish you number of success with your individual projects as well as this one. And keep keep making your music. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. And for more information about Electro Melodica, go to our Facebook page. There is a link. Let's play the song Go. Let's get it.
tonight's show. I want to thank our guests tonight, Robert Booker, B. Taylor, and Electra Melodica for joining us tonight. I have to give a shout-out to my uh, nephew, my baby nephew, who turns six tomorrow, and my mother, her birthday was last week. I'll be here this weekend. Thank you all for listening. God bless, and have a good week. Introducing the all new 2018 Subaru Crosstrack at 2.9% financing on a Crosstrack today. Learn more at Subaru of Kennesaw.com. Cannot be combined with any other incentive financing to well qualified applicants. Subject to credit approval, vehicle insurance approval, and vehicle availability. No down payment required. See participating retailers for details. Offer expires 11 30 17.